gentlemen, thank you for joining me in this video. I'm going to run you through five tips and they are worthwhile listening to because they're going to be some amazing tips that are going to actually going to help you build some muscle mass. I'm an ectomorph, have that kind of hard gainer uh, body type. So you'll, if you're one of those and you really struggle to gain some muscle mass, even when you eat loads, you feel like you're stuffing yourself every single day and you just can't seem to see any growth, any, any results whatsoever. So for that reason, I mean, I've over the years, I, I wanted to try to master this. So I've had many failures along the way. The way I was eating, I've probably been through exactly what you're going through if you're watching this video and it's gonna hopefully help uh, most of you out and actually fasten up your muscle gains and your mass, uh, getting that sort of mass and start seeing some good broadness to your body. Because I found that very difficult for at least for the first few years because again, didn't have this knowledge. And uh, now that I have it, I'm just trying to pass it out there to so making sure most of you guys don't have to go through that and doesn't make you feel um, sort of uh, upset and kind of depressed about training because it's very important that you enjoy the goal and that was one of the things that I found um, because I'm not seeing anything because I'm not seeing any mass gains or really getting side you, you know you look at others and you kind of go gym and you kind of look at things like the magazines and things like that and think you know how do they gain such a huge muscular size and they, you know you're trying everything and you just can't get there so these are the great five tips that I've had through my years and I think they were the best things that really worked for me and started helping me really put on a huge amount of muscle and actually visually see it happening and really you know hitting those um, pounds on the scales up and uh, measuring myself up and now we're seeing some better results once I started um, following these uh, five tips which are very important so that's what I want to share with you today. So I'm going to go straight in and uh, go in with the first one so if you're just like me a hard gang to more really struggling uh, I want to make your life easier. That's one of the things. I wanted to make things a bit more uh, sustainable. You want to make it enjoyable because that's very important. The last thing you want is you're working out, you're training, and you don't really feel good about it because you're always worried about, even though you're trying to eat, you're still not gaining any muscle, you're not still gaining any weight that you're actually looking for. It's not really filling out really well. And that kind of makes you feel pretty off and like you don't really actually want to work out you need to enjoy the process so that was the main thing you know you may enjoy training but because the goals isn't happening um, it kind of puts you off so uh, you know let's make them work so I'm going to give you these uh, five tips so I'm going to start straight off into number one is the thing that I found worked the best so this is the number one tip I give you and you definitely need to incorporate into your diet is that you're always going to find it hard to get that surplus calorie mark even when you eat so much even if you calculate your calories and you're trying to hit like a 3000 calorie mark if that's what your surplus amount is depending on like I said your your body type your your current age your weight and everything your height so if that's if that's what your mark was around 3000 and you find it a struggle to reach um, the best way to get calories in and make things day to day sustainable is having liquid calories. So that's the number one thing I will tell you. So I do liquid calories, which I used to do and made my life so much easier. I used to do liquid calories at least twice a day and mostly I did them in the morning. So first thing, because that's another thing, you might not be much of a big eater because I was never much of a, a huge eater or a huge appetite. I like to eat in the morning first thing, you have your breakfast, but I can't eat huge amounts. I can't pack in 600, 700 calories plus uh, you know, uh, amounts of nutrition going down my body. I just can't do it. It just, you know, you just feel really like, you feel pretty sick. That's how I feel. That's, that's, you know, that's for me. I mean, you might be able to put that amount of calories in and it might work for you and you might find it, uh, having liquid calories as a convenience somewhere else in your day because uh, you ain't got access to your kitchen, you ain't got access to getting any food. So you might want to just uh, sort of, you know, pre prep your liquid calories, etc. Wherever wherever you are. So you could obviously look at where it fits you the best, but for me, Liquid cut is the number one thing definitely to add in, but you just need to find where it fits you the best. And for me, it was in the morning first thing, because you could just literally just, you know, get started with work, just literally packing a, a big shake, which is has like protein powder in there, I might put oats and banana, etc., peanut butter, things like that. So I pack, I pack it up and I just, you know, just drink that and just get really started with work straight away. And uh, 10, 15 minutes, it's down. So I don't have to worry about cooking and making a meal. So it makes the meal prepping side easier as well, because it's just a quick blend and you're going to get it down a lot easier as well. And I used to do the same thing at night. So right before that bedtime, a couple of hours before, I make sure it's just liquid calories again, because the last thing I want to do, and especially if it's coming like 10 o'clock at night or something, I'm going to hit the bed at midnight. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be looking for a meal. I don't want to be prepping or eating solids. I just want something easy, quick digesting, but it's going to have some high calories. It's going to help me. So definitely liquid calories, guys, is one of the things that you need and uh, definitely put that into your diet. 
The second thing that was really good was making sure that I eat all the time. That worked great for me. And I think it's something that you definitely need to incorporate, but it doesn't mean you have to do it as much as I did. Um, let's just say again, it de depends on your surplus calorie figure. Could be 3,000, could be 4,000, or it could even be more. So for that reason, you need to basically decide how many meals you would eat in a day and what would work for you. So ideally, it's, it's a good way to break it up and not just go for the standard three meals a day, because three meals a day, even if you had to like hit 3,000 calories, you need to eat 1,000 calories per meal, which is a very hard thing to do. And you're gonna feel pretty stuffed. And it also can impact you, your, like when you're going to the gym, because you feel pretty heavy, you feel sluggish, and you can't even have a great workout. And the other one is gonna be that just trying to shove all that in, it can actually put you off eating and put you off your next meal, like you just don't feel like eating. So again, I just felt like that I was always the, you know, overly bloated and just you know, full of food in my stomach and just, just feel like uh, pretty tired and sluggish as well because you're just overeating, your energy just feels pretty dead as well. So for that reason, I wouldn't really recommend going for um, large meals and just having less meals in the day. I prefer and would recommend you have more meals. So you need to sort of bump your meals up to sort of right between four and seven. That's the best, but that depends on how it works for you. For me, six was the great number. So I used to wake up really early just to get that extra meal in and uh, having having that shake as a second part of my breakfast as well. And then I'm, then I'm going into things like having lunch and then again, something after lunch, then having dinner, then obviously, and then having something uh, late at night, a couple hours before bed again. So that's kind of worked best for me and it works around uh, my lifestyle. So it depends on your situation, the way you're, you know, where you're going to work. Do you have that time to eat six meals or do you have to bring it down to between like four and five? But definitely try to add um, the most amount of meals you can. You'll just find it's a bit more easy, it's a bit more sustainable because you're not going to find that you're kind of like, you know, overeating or bloating yourself out. And you just have better digestion overall. You have better energy as well because your body's going to use what you put in. And I think that's a, a great way of uh, basically trying to eat regularly is going to just help you with your goal and it's going to help you sustain and reach your surplus a lot easier because you can like, even if you had to eat 3,000 calories a day, you can actually break your meals into, if it was six, you could say each one has to be roughly 500 calories. So it just, you know, it's like rather than shoveling a thousand down, it's like 500 calories gonna be a lot more easier to manage. And uh, when you eat more meals, yeah, it's gonna require a little bit of meal prep, but sometimes it doesn't have to be so difficult with the meal prep. To make your life easier with meal prep, um, what I used to do, which if I was going to do that, I would say eat the same thing twice. So instead of just eating a, like a, a portion of what you're about to eat, unless, instead of it being 1,000 calories, just eat it in two different settings. So eat half of it. So eat 500 calories worth of what you're eating and then just give it like two or three hours later and then go again and eat the same thing. Eat the remaining 500 calories. You'll be able to put it down better. You'll feel better about it. Keeps your metabolic rate at a, at a good pace as well. So you're digesting and stuff all the time. And it just, you know, it just makes you feel a lot more better. So the third one I'm going to jump into guys, this is more of the negative impact that you can get from eating certain foods and this is the, the junk calories. So you've got to wait, you've got to just sort of, sort of stay away from what I call the empty calories and the empty calories are things like you're having like juices, carbonated drinks, you're having maybe some sort of alcohol based drinks like wines and stuff like that and uh, they're all like sugar calories, same thing if you're eating like sweets and sort of like you know sweet stuff all the time, cakes and biscuits, there's a lot of empty calories in those types of foods meaning you're not getting great nutrition from them. So as much as you add them into your calories, whether you try to hit again that 300, that 3,000 plus, 3,500 plus calorie surplus, let's say even you made it, but then some of them were like 500 calories, let's say you had like 500 calories was from literally the, uh, maybe from a carbonated drink. Um, and uh, if you look at the nutrition of carbonate, it's basically just going to be 500 calories coming from sugar. That's no good for you because that doesn't help with any muscle mass, that doesn't help with any rebuild of muscle, it's just overloading your body with sugar. So for that reason, they're empty calories. So you might still hit your calories surplus and still notice that you're not actually gaining any weight, not gaining any muscle size because if you're having those things, they don't really count because it's empty calories. It's got no value of nutrition to your body and it's not going to help anything to do with actually building muscle or gaining the right kind of weight that you're looking for. So I'm not saying you can't eat junk food, you just got to eat the right junk food. Look for junk food that's going to have a nutritional value. So for example, when you're eating food itself, whether sometimes if it, if it is fried food based, if it is like eating pizzas and burgers and things like that, in that kind of junk food, it has nutritional value to you. And those things are very high in calorie, they have a bit more higher fats in the food and stuff like that. So sometimes those are the ones that will be more beneficial to actually help you bulk up. So go for those options and just avoid the empty calories. Let's jump into number four, I'm going to talk about water. This is a very important one and uh, kind of made a huge impact of how I was drinking my water. So I had to basically manage it the right way before I was just drinking it down when you're doing your workouts or when you're eating. Every time you're eating a meal, I have water next to me so you're drinking something down with it. And um, 
I've realised at a certain point, so I think this was a major, major concern at the time when I'm thinking that, you know, I could put some more calories down if I didn't drink that water. So this is the one of the things that you need to manage. You still need to drink it, you need, to, need it for your immune system, we need it for hydration, we need it for our muscle recovery. So water is still a, a great source that we need, and, um, but you need to manage it throughout the day when you're trying to actually gain some weight. And the way it worked the best is actually trying not to have water 30 minutes before you're about to have your meal. You don't want to feel bloated. You don't want to feel like, oh, I'm not going to be able to eat enough calories from my meal. You won't be able to eat more. Otherwise, it's going to literally bring your portion size down and you're not going to be able to get enough calories because you're consuming too much water. So that's another way of bringing it, um, sort of managing your, your water levels. And then the next thing you want to do is don't have water with your meals. Because every time you're going to have it with your meals, you're going to find that you're just going to get full of it quicker and you could have eaten a bit more if you didn't drink the water. So you have to find a way of managing your water throughout the day. So spread it out through the day and just uh, try to be aware of it that you stop drinking water about 30 minutes before your meals. Don't drink it with your meals. And that's kind of all you really got to worry about. So you can, after you finish your meal, you're completely full, you start drinking water afterwards, whether it's 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes afterwards, whether you get into your workouts. Just drink it generally throughout the day. So keep a bottle with you, trying to get your um, two, three liters, whatever is uh, the sort of requirement for your body. And uh, just, uh, yeah, just, just take that on board and try to avoid it during the meal time. Right. So let's jump into the last one. This is kind of a myth out there as well when people tell you not to eat before bed. It depends what you're really saying here because everybody sleeps at a different time. This was another one, you know, like you just people just set a time just thinking, oh, you shouldn't be eating after 8 o'clock or 8, 9 p.m. It's just like that should be the last meal of the day. That doesn't necessarily work for you because if you're going to be looking at surplus calories and if you haven't even made up your calories because you're still losing out that one more meal even after dinner, you need to eat that meal because if you give up on that, you're never going to reach your goal. You're never going to gain that muscle mass. You need to daily make sure that you still eat something, even if it's late night. And uh, it kind of works on according the time you actually go to sleep. So that's how you have to balance it off. It doesn't mean I'm saying eat at night directly before bed. That's not a good thing because, you know, that can give you all sorts of problems. You don't really be sleeping on food, cause you some all sorts of indigestion problem, food coming back up and things like that. I mean, that's something you want to avoid. Um, but you do want to be able to have something in the evening. Again, what worked for me best was kind of going for the liquid calories. But uh, I would probably go certain times. If I'm sleeping late, if I'm not going to sleep till probably like, let's say midnight, for example, I would at least have something like by 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock in the evening gives me at least an hour and a half before I'm actually going to lay down. So that's how you've got to see it. If you're up to like 1, 2 in the morning, you can still have your meal roughly 11 o'clock coming closer to the 12, uh, well, at midnight. So you've got to look at it. It's more about when you're about to go to bed so if you are going to sleep late, you just got to think, uh, you know, at least give yourself a couple of hours or even an hour and a half or something, depending, you know, how, you, how your body functions through the night when you sleep after, you know, eating meals. So you just got to kind of see what fits for you. But you definitely need to eat, even if it's late at night. So just consider it as in like at least an hour and a half, a couple of hours before bed, you should have your last meal. You need that for recovery. We need that for slow digestion through the night as well because it's going to actually help uh, feed your muscles and it's going to help you put that extra uh, muscle mass on. So And it's also going to make it a lot more easy for you to actually get your daily calories in rather than just thinking, that, oh, I needed to make other meals larger. You can just go for another uh, smaller meal during the night. If you've watched this far, guys, don't forget to smash that like button. That's it from this video today. If you want to make any comments about the video, like to know anything else, do comment down below and we'll get back to you. If you guys really need help with some coaching to basically help you with workouts and nutritional planning, then check out the link down below, which I'll leave there. And uh, that's it from me today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope this actually helps you out and really helps you achieve some of your goals there, trying to pack on some muscle mass and um, you can follow these tips along the way to make your life easier so it's not taking you uh, more years to try to put that mass on. It can uh, really speed up your gains. And uh, yeah, guys, so don't forget, uh, keep working out and keep strong.